You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Thank you for joining Two Guys and a Lot of Wine tonight. You're in for a treat. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And we have two operatic extraordinaires with us this evening. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm very, very thrilled to have both of them on the show. Uh, my dear friend, Kate Callahan Hardman, uh, operatic soprano extraordinaire. We'll go into that shortly. And Mr. Luke Scott, Mr. Baritone extraordinaire. And both of these people will be performing La Bohème in the state of Connecticut for the whole month of May at four locations, and we're going to go into those in a short period of time. But I want to thank both of you for joining us tonight. Thanks Katie. for having us, Bob. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. And the, their list of accomplishments are so long. Katie, she's performed at Carnegie Hall, Santa Fe Opera. She's intended, um, uh, was it Heart School of Music? Juilliard. Juilliard. And I think, Luke, you were at the Heart I School of Music. I studied at the Heart School of Music. Yeah. And uh, I can go on and on, and we're going to go into that later. But they're joining us for drinks tonight in co cohesion with performing La Bohème, because we're drinking Italian wine. Well, I was just going to say, we're doing an Italian theme tonight to kind of tie all this together. So thank mm -hmm. you for making us drink some really great Italian wine tonight. Our pleasure. Well, we don't know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so our first wine tonight, Jim, I think... Uh, this is a, an Italian white wine. It's a very obscure varietal here in the United States, but it's actually one of the oldest grape varietals in the world. It's a Falangina. And this was actually planted in southern Italy uh, by the Greeks several thousand years ago. So let's give this a shot. This was, um, I was expecting this to taste a little like a Sauvignon Blanc, but we tried this before the show. It's a little bit heavier. Yeah, it's got a, a lot more body than a Sauvignon Blanc would. Um, and it's, you mentioned earlier, uh, you were talking about Chardonnay. This, this kind of reminds me a little bit of Chardonnay. Got a little more of a syrupiness to it. Yep, but it has some minerality to it. Um, you know, the official tasting notes said crushed stone. And I kind of get a little bit of that when I drink this. I still get a citrusy flavor, so I, mean, yeah. I, I certainly would not classify this as a Chardonnay. But uh, from the Italian perspective, in La Bohème, how, what, what do you think? I mean, does it taste like an Italian white to you? I know you've traveled to Italy, you've been to Italy. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been to Italy. I've, I've been to Spain, tasted mm -hmm. a fair amount of wines there. But um, this particular Falangina I have not tasted before. Um, I. I think what you what you I know you said the notes about there being some earth crushed stone, stuff mm -hmm. like that, that sort of balances out the slightly syrupiness that I taste in it. Maybe that's yeah. the, some of the citriness that you mentioned, Bob. Um, I like it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it's, it's, it's something it's, you just yeah. don't argue with your mind. You just say, it's a good wine. Am I, am I into a, a white wine right now? It's got a little, yeah. a slight fizz on the tongue. Does yeah, I will, I will say for an slight. Italian wine, it, it's not what I would expect. Mm -hmm. I actually really like this white a lot. Yeah, right you're used to the, the Pinot Grigio, which is very light, very watery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this has so much more body than a Pinot Grigio. So I got to ask, so performing in La Boheme, I think your first performance is May 1st. Mm -hmm, tomorrow night. And I believe that is at New Britain uh, Trinity on May. Yes, it correct? is. Mm -hmm. And uh, what could you tell us a little bit about La Boheme? I mean, uh, well, we're performing with the Connecticut Lyric Opera. Um, we're doing four performances. I'm singing on two performances. I'm the Mimi in, on the 1st and the 29th of May. We'll get into that. Luke is the Marcello, the lead baritone, and he's singing all four performances. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful cast. The orchestra is absolutely first rate. It's the Connecticut Virtuosi Chamber Orchestra. The conductor of the whole shebang is Adrian Sylvine. Um, he's just wonderful. We're having a great time. We have some fabulous castmates. Daniel Juarez is absolutely the most spectacular tenor. He's singing Rodolfo. You're not going to hear better. I mm. mean, if you go to the Metropolitan Opera, you're not going to hear better. Um, Urante Svedaita is the other soprano singing the other two performances. Um, and, we ha and she's just gorgeous, no well known around Connecticut. We have um, a fun feature. We have a six foot ten bass singing oh Colline, oh. <laughs> uh, who's absolutely fantastic. And we have a wonderful Chouinard. And our Musetta is a wonderful girl named Heather O'Connor. And she's just fantastic. 
Um, it's going to be a great show. It's I'm sure it is. Small I'm, venues, yeah. but it's it's really beautiful, spectacular music and a great mm -hmm. location and great singers. Yeah, and I think uh, the next show, May 3rd, which is at the uh, Infinity Music Hall. Yeah. And uh, you're also performing on the 15th at the New London Guard Art Center. Yep. 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 The, yeah. And then the 29th at uh, Middletown High School. Yeah, all beautiful venues. And there is a website. We'll give you that website at the end of the mm -hmm. show also. Sure. So we got to ask you, how would you rate this from an operatic perspective? Yeah. Bob and I usually do thumbs up <laughs> or thumbs, thumbs, up, down, thumbs down, but for tonight we're going to do something special. Luke, what do you think? Is it's it a Libyamo? It's either Libyamo or Botra Toast. <laughs> But I would definitely be a thumbs up, <laughs> especially I don't usually choose white wines, mm -hmm. and the fact that it is a little earthier, a little bit more, like you said, stone, little body, heavier, more than you'd expect, um, I'd probably grab it more often if I had it at home yep. than right. some of the other white wines that I tend to have around. Mm -hmm. I um, love this. So, I, yeah. certainly. Are you going to hit a high this. note for us? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Right. Toast. <laughs> Perfect. It must be excellent. So we start off with operatic <laughs> thumbs up yes. for the first one. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So uh, the next red, or the first red we're going to go into, is one that I picked out. It's a Montepulciano di Abruzzo, which I love saying, and Kate has a great story about that before we're done drinking this. And uh, I guess most of the best, biggest region for this particular grape is the Abruzzo region for mm -hmm. Montepulciano. Yeah. So generally, it's a, it can be a very rich and bold wine. And uh, whether or not it's going to be as powerful as the tasting notes say, we will find out momentarily. Some of my favorite Italians are Montepulciano's, so I'm oh, really looking forward to this, Bob. It's got a really nice, big, bold aroma oh, right off the nose, bat. Great nose, yeah. Um, raspberry, maybe? Yeah, there's some kind of a, like a raisiny, yep. you know. Mm. I like the smell best. That's my favorite part. Well, <laughs> not really. Well, <laughs> it's not as bold as you sometimes would expect mm. from Montepulciano di Abruzzo. Uh, it also tends sometimes to be a little darker in mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. But I think this still offers a pretty good flavor. Mm -hmm. it's I love the flavor. It mm, disappears kind of quickly though. I was expecting I was it just, to linger a little longer. just going to say that, that it tasted really big right up in front. Yep. And I was like, oh wow. And then it, and then it just kind of just falls off a cliff. Yeah, which, yeah. Is, which could be fine. Sometimes yep. see it, that makes it. <laughs> that makes you drink more. Maybe drink more. <laughs> but it doesn't make it any less enjoyable necessarily. Some people that's want right. it to linger longer. but yes. It left almost a port for me. Almost you're right. Maybe you're absolutely saying, right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like a, like and a that's back to the raisiny kind of thing. Strong raisiny kind of like concentrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and most mm -hmm. Italian wines are really made to air with food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is an example where this particular one would probably go good with a red sauce, of course, and Italian spicy meats. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to mm -hmm. overpower the food that you're eating. It sort of complements what you're eating. This yes. I eat with a, with a gorgonzola yeah. and like a heavy. Really old stinky cheese. Yeah, <laughs> like an Italian <laughs> cheese, Taleggio. <laughs> That's a smelly cheese, but it certainly is really. It doesn't. It tastes much better than it smells, and it goes very good with wine. It's a soft mm. cheese, but it has that, like you said, that stinky cheese uh -huh. quality. But then you have all these flavors and aromas mixing, and you need a sweetness in yeah. the cheese to go with. This. Right, it's beautiful. Yep. You know, it's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, we have two operatic stars behind me here. Luke is right behind me, and I can tell you with that voice, you sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, that's what that's what they always said. You you want to you want to make your voice sound like James Earl Jones yep. as much as possible, uh, um, <laughs> and uh, then just put on a big black helmet. I, I'm waiting for him to say, "May the wine be with you." That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, that's you. you so, that all right. So let's give this uh, an operatic thumbs up or thumbs down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. <laughs> well, we are really Excellent. classing it up on this show. This is actually our third Italian show, Goofy actually. It is. You know. we've, we've had, I think, more Italian shows than it, this is our official, the uh, champagne show. Yes, that's right. So, and uh, it's, it's great to have two great singers to pair with yeah. three. So, well, at least two good mm -hmm. wines so far. So, uh, you know what, Bob, my biggest gig was? Your wedding. You know, I wasn't going to say that, but I, <laughs> my wife and I, uh, Katie is one of my wife's oldest friends, and her and her husband, Ray Hardman, who also does the opening and end credits, it is banned radiation for our show, sing at our wedding. And you guys, uh, it was a very important and uh, emotional. It was our favorite it, gig. It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> and uh, please, you guys have to see them perform this month, both Luke and Katie. They're great singers. And if you like opera, La Bohème is fantastic. The, yep. Even if you're on the fence about opera, if you're not sure you love opera and you think, I'd like to see an opera, this is the opera. It's a great starter opera. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's a 
the music it, is incredibly glorious. There are subtitles. I was just going to ask if there were um, subtitles for and, people. And, who and it's Italian. just absolutely spectacular. La Bohème is, is one of is well known for being one of people's first operas. Mm -hmm. because, My first opera. Because well, for one thing. It's really, really, really easy to connect to about the human experience. There isn't a lot of frills. There's, there's the sense of people just living on whatever, living for feelings, for mm -hmm. emotions, for friends. The whole opera, pretty much, you're in and out in about two hours. That's and most That's operas, really, yeah, yeah. most little... people think, well, I don't want, maybe I don't want to go to an opera and sit there for three and a half hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how are sp people supposed to dress for this? Oftentimes oh. you think of opera and you think of tuxedos. No, Some oh, people do. No. I, I think it's really nice to see people, whatever their day was, Sunday afternoon and matinee, and they wanted to get, that was a big day for them. They wanted to go to the opera. They could get dressed up. You see them in the audience and you think, Hey, that's wonderful. Yeah. This is that. This is that thing for them. Some people they just came last minute because they didn't know they're going to make it. They show up in jeans and the flannel shirt and whatever and it's else. Great. And they just ate a burrito Perfect. and they sit down and it's and they're just as involved. I'm of the school that opera is not this big highfalutin thing. And people have to get fancy and it's super expensive. It's not super expensive. It's not super fancy, and it's very accessible. The, they're accessible you know is a thing it should be accessible. Yeah. It, it was meant to be when it, when it first all these things were first performed mm -hmm. it was it was just pennies people go to see yeah. these things. Oh. sometimes they wouldn't wow. they, they wouldn't pay much at all and because the the composers and the artists and everything they just wanted it to get out into their audiences yeah. it wasn't much of a big to do there was certainly some beauty and and and, and vintageness about it but it wasn't necessarily it was the accessible mm -hmm. it was it was the main entertainment so we've twisted it into this big well, kind of well, we've, well, we've gotten so many entertainments yeah. now, you know, this yeah. like incredible, incredible evolution of entertainment. Yeah. Back then, that was your main, that was like your best circus you mm -hmm. could go see yeah. was the yeah. opera. So what do we have going into our All right. third red? Our third red tonight is, this is a Nebbiolo. Um, this is often referred to in Italy as the king of red grapes. And you get the beautiful Barolo and the Barbaresco come from this grape. Uh, this is grown in the Piedmont area, which is up in the northern part of Italy. Uh, but tonight we're just going to try just the, uh, the Nebbiolo itself. And we all need I pours. Need pour, yes, even mine is gone. Come on, Jim. Ah. Now, this is a wine. I actually I had this with my wife for decanting. a couple of weeks ago uh, and noticed that it needed to decant. Uh, so I opened this about an hour before the show and let it breathe. So this should taste much better than it would right out of the bottle. And is that common for Italian wines? You still want to decant? You know, it's for me. It's just experience. Well, if you drink something, something, I gotta get some. Uh, Bob, I'm does not mean to cheat you here. It has like that dark cocoa spice. Now the funny thing about Nebbiolo is that it gets mm. as it ages. Yeah. You see now, this is a very young wine. It's kind of got a, a violet ruby color to it. Legs to it. Uh, yeah. If you put this down for just three or four years, mm. as it ages, it will turn to kind of a, a brick orange color. Oh, really? It, it really degrades wow. that quickly in color. but How about it, in flavor? Uh, the flavor starts to go, too. Oh. Yeah. So this, wow. is, this is a wine that's meant to be consumed almost immediately. Wow, no idea. That's true for a lot of Italian wines, generally, mm -hmm. isn't it? A lot of Italian wines, generally, you do want to consume quickly. There are it's, exceptions, um, of course. Well, I think, it, I think that what really that goes to is the grape varietal. There are some grape it's varietals that are meant to be cellared for quite a while, mm. and others that are meant to be consumed. Oh, that's lovely. Wow. This one really mm. hits you right in the palate. Really. It does, especially it, on the it sides. You, yeah, it yeah, it's got tannins. It's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's got some tannin to it. Um, it's got some acidity. Mm -hmm. That's what's getting you in the, the side of the Not mouth. Not too much acidity though. It's just enough to kind of spike, spike the, the tartness mm -hmm. of it just a yeah. little bit. I, I, I usually don't. I love a wine that's the acidity is is at a balance such where you really feel like as you would go through the bottle with your sitting down to to eat dinner or whatever. You, it doesn't build up over time that mm -hmm. you've had this much acid. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's it's like a I don't know how to say it. It's just it's it's the right recipe, I guess. Well, that's what you're looking for is balance in yeah. the wine. You want mm -hmm. some acidity, but not a whole lot. And so this I think this wine does a great job of that because there's mm. it's it's detectable, but it's not overpowering. It'd be great with some kind of steak with balsamic vinegar. Kind well, the of, um, um, you know. yeah, balsamic vinegar, vinegar would go with, with this. Uh, some kind of mushroom mm -hmm. risotto. Uh, any kind of lamb would be mm -hmm. great. With this. No, Jim, I gotta say you love right up that mushroom risotto. Damn you! Will you please make me some? <laughs> yeah, I've heard Next you talk about that over. mushroom risotto Next so many time times. Maybe you could do a pasta. You could do a, I mean, a pasta. I mean, yeah. I, I, in the event of pasta with wine, it's yeah. all about the different, mm -hmm. different preparations of yeah. pastas and wine. Mm. It is, but I think this would definitely, obviously, it's go with lovely. the mushroom risotto, which I still mm. haven't had yet, but I'm still looking forward <laughs> to. But yeah, this definitely is the kind of wine that is the complexity is such where mm. uh, the food pairing, I think, is kind of critical. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can just put. Put this this is anything. not the, the wine you sit down and sip. No, just no, for, no. Know, when you first get, I think our first the, the Montepulciano like definitely better for more yeah. of a 
cocktail wine. But that's true of a lot of Italian wines. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. really designed to go with food mm -hmm. and not to be consumed by themselves. Um, and it's, you know, you're supposed to eat the food from that region yeah. because that's, that's what they've grown up eating and drinking together. So, Anything Piedmontese would be delicious. Oh, mm -hmm. So let's get the operatic mm -hmm. oh, thumbs absolutely. up or thumbs down for this one. Thumbs up, right? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a thumbs up. It's, it's a, a great time. I knew there was going to be all thumbs up tonight. I just yeah. had a feeling there was going to be all thumbs up tonight. But you have to do... <sighs> I don't know. Luke, do something. Let Luke go first this time. Il vino se buona Oh, that was fantastic. I got chills. I got chills. I will do that to you. That was phenomenal. Well, I, mean, I, I knew the wines were going to be good tonight. And They're of course, delicious. that would be really tasty. embarrassing if you picked lousy wines. But we never know. <laughs> we, we do, we never know. Oh, that's of course. Everything would be I mean, sometimes yeah, I we, we, we bring stuff we've tasted, but not always. Usually, yeah, we try and bring wines on that we've had before, but every once in a while, you know, we bring in something that we haven't tasted and it ends up being a loser. You want, you, want to, you want to do your honest, otherwise, I mean, there's no yeah. such thing as every bottle you pick out. Oh, well, it's this and this, and it's all great. Right. Because, because that's even different people will mm -hmm. want a different right. wine. So. Now, the only exception is you guys always sing great. You never know if you're going to get a great bottle of wine, but you guys always sing great. Which goes into the next question. How long have you guys been performing? I know you've been performing opera since you've been out of college. If In not college. Long. Luke, what yeah. about yourself? How long have you been singing? Um, I stopped at a college for a little while, a few years, and then I sort of picked back up again. Um, which is, as I, when I started to sing again, I started to sing with the Kinetic Lyric Opera, so it's kind of interesting that I'm standing here with you and Kate oh. and everybody, and uh, it's a bit related to me stopping and starting again. Probably about 12 years total between uh, from when I was studying school to now. And Kate, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. I know you don't like throwing numbers out, but how long for you now? A long time, Bob. Okay, <laughs> a long time. But I did also stop for a while. Yeah. The two little boys in the control room, yeah. they, they <laughs> took up That's some right. time. Oh. And of course, and Ray, too, Raymond. Oh, Ray, too. And if That's you say true. the wrong thing, the boy might hit the disable button. Yes. It'll all just be <laughs> clicked out. And, and very excitingly, Ben Hardman, my son, is also in the opera. Oh, and wow. he has That's true. A, one line, but it's a really beautiful line, and he sings it wonderfully. Yes. How many times did he have to rehearse? Not that many. He's very bright. Well, it runs in the family, talent. Yeah. It's just, you know, he just. I think he's smarter than us. starting him early. He showed up and knew it the first day. He did. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, I even tried to sing it by accident because yeah. I didn't know he was singing. He, tried to he step looked on the at me like, that's child. my line. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Like, he's already starting to don't step on my toes. Exactly. <laughs> Got upstaged by the baritone <laughs> again. <laughs> so once again, La Boheme, it's obviously, we were talking about it earlier, um, and you're performing it the whole month of May. Um, do you do a lot of rehearsing, or you just go right in? Or do you rehearse ahead of time, or when you perform? Oh, yeah. Do you just show up that night and sing, or are you performing constantly through the whole month? Well, Luke, well, I mean, I mean, I guess I think your question probably is asking. So, so we're performing in the month of May, but for the past month, a little less than a month, um, we've been rehearsing several times a week, and you kind of mm -hmm. put things together. You know, you you go through musical things, you go through staging things, you go through your characters' act actions and everything else, and then when now this in this past week, you put together with the orchestra, you get you start to get some costumes and lighting and sets and mm -hmm. everything and you kind of put it all and it's a bit of a like I said a, I mentioned circus before because it's a little bit like a circus there's yeah. all these things come together mm -hmm. and then it's live go no looking back yeah so right. there isn't really I mean yeah we, we do practice um, a ton. well have you performed La Boheme in the past I've never done it before. okay so, so this is my first my first, first your, I've your done first another role in it but okay. this was my first time as yeah, Amy the tenor has done down. it before mm -hmm. and I think he's had a chance to live with it a little more and yeah. then he's Yep. Really, really fantastic because you can tell he has a little bit higher understanding. I know, I'm jealous when I'm on stage and I'm like, I, I can tell he's got that higher yeah. feeling of, of who his character is and yeah. everything because he's lived mm -hmm. with it a little longer. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that in the future and <coughs> meeting him there as we go through the performances. Now, do you plan on reprising this role at some point in the future? Uh, I would hope so because it's just such, I mentioned before, there's a reason the show is so successful and therefore it's, I would like to perform it as many times as I can yep. before I'm way too old to sing. It's just fantastic. Well, what's interesting is they get to rehearse before they perform. Me and Jim, we just wing out when we do the show. <laughs> yeah, so you, you never know oh, what yeah. you're going to get. You guys are like true bohemians. Yeah, you, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, there's you know. no the script, yeah. there's no dialogue. <laughs> so, uh, but usually it works out pretty well. Yeah, we just show up and drink. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they did like level them. Yeah. <laughs> they did level them. They, they tried all to. about a bunch of, mm. bunch of guys and a, you know, a couple of women who, and they're all young and living in Paris, and they're all poor. And my character's 
gut consumption, which is tuberculosis. So, sadly, <laughs> you know, do you have to cough a lot during a the lot. production? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, I do. There's a moment, in, there's a moment in the Act Three duet where she's she's coming to look for her lover, who's my my best friend roommate, and. And I say, oh, I think he's waking up. I think he's mm -hmm. in there. And she kind of goes away coughing. And I say, oh, my God, your cough is so awful. And, you know, and, and she's like, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Actually, yeah. do you ever, I know there's props on the show. I know you guys sometimes eat. Do you ever actually actually drink real alcohol when you're uh -huh. doing something? Not sports? alcohol. No. But, but like, for instance, like, there's a. Grapefruit juice or something this, Yeah, like there's that. a scene. We're in a cafe. We're supposed to be in a cafe. Cafe Mamoose. And we're all there. And it's the first time we meet Mimi when she enters with Rodolfo. And we're drinking cranberry juice. Um, you know, cranberry juice, maybe water down a little bit to try and look like wine. But we have regular food. We have real chicken. Mm -hmm. um, but not, usually most singers wouldn't want to put a real, mm -hmm. you know, anything. Maybe wine. I'd be okay with yeah. wine personally. I've done that before. But but not like a liquor or anything like no, that. No, it's drying. It'll dry you out. Yeah, yeah you and don't want to have that feeling. And also make you a little goofy. I, you know, I just yeah. saw the, uh, <laughs> the Frank, Frank Sinatra biography. And oh, very he, good. He would quit good. drinking a week before he had a performance just yeah. because he didn't want to dry and out. And smoking too, so, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that yeah. Frank Sinatra recorded about 800 songs. Most wow. people don't realize he actually wow. made that many recordings of that many individual songs. He also conducted and scored some of those songs. Mm. Fantastic career. Yeah. It, was a, it was a great uh, Prolific. series. Yeah. Great series. Another yeah. important Italian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also want to point out, if you want to get any more information about Kinetic Opera in general, um, the, the web, website is uh, ctlyricopera.org. Mm -hmm. Yep, believe, right? it's the Connecticut Lyric Opera. CT Opera. Uh, CT Lyric. CT Lyric Opera. Opera. Mm -hmm. org. Yeah. And you could always find some more information about anything. Everything. Yeah, can you buy tickets through the website? You can. You can. You can. You can also buy. There's a certain. There's a, there's a certain amount of um, like tickets on on the spot there. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can call and make reservations. Are these reserved seats or is it just general seating? Depends on the theater. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Guard Arts Center they might have reserved. Some seating. of the bigger theaters, which are set up like a Broadway theater, will be numbered. So mm -hmm. you'll have balcony. You'll have orchestra. Such. But then I think the Middletown Performing Arts Center, maybe it's just two, two main sections. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lower section that's like handicapped available. Actually, that's a great, if anyone is thinking about going but they're a little bit worried about handicap accessibility, the Middletown Performing Arts Center has a huge ramp to a bunch of orchestra seats. So I know there's yeah. some, some, some wonderful elderly people who are going to come and see the show then specifically to that theater because okay. they know they can just roll right in. Oh, that's, good. Yeah. that's important because good by the time know. this show airs, I know uh, the 15th, which is the New London uh, Grand Art Center. Guard Art Center. Guard, I keep yeah. messing that up. It's called the Guard. Yeah, the Guard. Guard, guard Art Center. Yeah. They should just say Guard. Garden. It makes <laughs> it a lot easier. And the 29th Middletown High School. And once again, um, they, they, by the time the show is, is airing, those shows will be available for tickets mm -hmm. also. And I would strongly recommend you getting tickets to see both these singers because they will sell out. Yes, and uh, they're good. They're good. Mm -hmm. So the three wines tonight. If we have to pick a favorite, which I'm going to do. I mm -hmm. we don't do that, but I'm going to do it. Hmm. I'm going to, this might surprise you, the white. Mm -hmm. The Falangina. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I knew you so. were going to do that. You were talking about so much in the beginning. I was like, I think that's his favorite wine. And that is a shock. I, 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 I thought you would surprised. have gone with the Monte Pucciano. That's my second. Okay. And the third, only because I think I would appreciate the, that one over dinner, mm -hmm. uh, a dinner yeah. with some food. And all we have here are crackers tonight. So um, it's good, but I, I'm going to reserve judgment for that when you have me over for dinner. All right. So <laughs> I will make a mushroom risotto. And that <laughs> damn mushroom risotto. Please make me the damn mushroom risotto. <laughs> so our, our remaining minutes, we have a couple minutes left. I want to once again uh, highly recommend Labo seeing M. both La Boheme yeah. through the month of May. Both Katie Callahan Hardman and uh, Luke Scott will be performing. And besides being good, which I've said numerous, numerous times, um, just go see opera, mm -hmm. and get cultured. You know, me and Jim don't normally do this show in a tuxedo, but, uh, you know, we're cultured tonight. You wear yes. it well, boys. Thank you. <laughs> oh, may I give a plug, a random plug? Uh, you plug right, um, right away. My husband, Ray Hardman, is in a fantastic punk band, and they were um, nominated for the Connecticut... I'm getting all, this all wrong, but the Connecticut Music Awards. That's awesome. It wow. sounds the, official. One of the best punk bands. And we just so, saw them last Saturday. They were good. And I wish I could remember the website right now to go to and vote. <laughs> so You'll hear about that if later. If you yeah. hear anything about voting for Connecticut's Best Music, Radiation for Best Punk radiation. Band. Radiation. Right. And they did the intro music for our show. So. Right. They do the so. intro and the end uh, theme song for yeah. our mm -hmm. show. And uh, it fits the show. You know, we might not be punk, but uh, we're still, oh, you're, yeah. we're you're still pretty roll. bad. Actually. <laughs> 
So uh, once again, I want to thank both of you guys for being on the show. I wish yeah. we could probably stand here an hour and drink and sing songs because you know how much I love both your voices. But uh, thanks again for, for showing up tonight. Salute. And, and drinking with us. And um, I know we'll be seeing your show tomorrow at, in New Britain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think my parents are going to probably come see you at the, on the 29th. Excellent. Because they're away. But um, thanks again, guys. So, Salute. Thank you. Now, before we wrap <laughs> things up, I just want to say, uh, say thanks to WHC TV. Thanks to Jim. Thanks to uh, Kate and Luke for being on the show tonight. And salute la bohème. Salute, salute. salute. salute la bohème.